Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs Post Game Live. Driven out of the deep center. Schaefer back. It is gone. Three run homer. Off the bench. Jorge Soler blasts one deep into the bleachers in left center. That's part of a nine run Cub onslaught tonight. Nine, 13, and three. A whole lot better than five, eight, and zero. Cubs win to get the 26 over 500. Hello, welcome in. Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. He's Todd Hollinsworth. I'm David Kaplan. Jorge Soler wants his spot on the postseason <laughs> roster. Internal competition that's what, what I talked it. about in the newsroom absolutely listen this is what happens this time of year this roster is going to get trimmed down as I'm going to go ahead and say it. we're going to get to where we need to be but you move into the playoffs you've got to cut that thing back down to 25 guys start to play for position jockeying for position and for guys that are pitching well in that bullpen coming off that bench what the roles are ultimately going to be Joe Madden's had the liberty of using an extensive roster all season long getting everybody involved and now here in September we've seen more pl players get involved but at some point it's going to have to work its way back down to what you're going to take into the playoffs so that being said yeah guys are fighting for elbow space and good to see Solaire taking full advantage of, of those at bats he's getting. All right, before we break it all down from tonight's game, let's check in with the Cubs Central Division rivals tonight. Reds and Cardinals in the Lou. Bottom of the eighth, Reds lead one zip card threatening. Johnny Peralta singles to right. Tommy Pham comes in to score. We are tied later in the inning. Steven Piscotti crushes one to deep left center. Peter Borges hustles all the way around for first. He scores cards plate two and win the ball game 2-1. And the Pirates and the Rockies are in the seventh inning at Coors Field, and it's the Pirates doubling up the Rocks. 6-3 right now in that ball game. Gregory Polanco at an RBI. Starling Marte, though, the big star of the night. Three for four is 18th bomb, a double, and two knocked in. Well, again, uh, everybody kind of taking care of their own business right now, but for the Cubs, taking care of business at home is easily the most important thing. Don't let today slip by. They didn't. Uh, it was a little sloppy early, and as I said, not maybe the most graceful game we've seen all season long. But again, getting the winning tonight against the team like the Brewers right now, who is just struggling in so many different ways. Braun out of the lineup tonight. Peralta struggling. You got to go get a win, and they did. All right, time for our Cholula Hot Sauce pitching recap from tonight's ball game. Jason Hamill had a rough first inning. Just wasn't sharp. Not getting the bite on his breaking stuff. He went up against Willie Peralta. Hamill, five innings, five hits, three earned, six Ks, one walk, and gave up one home run. It was a game-tying home run. Peralta, not good at all. Four and two-thirds, eight hits, six earned, two strikeouts, four walks, did not allow a long ball. Well, again, I thought this was a matchup that strongly favored us. Willie Peralta had been really struggling coming into this one. The offense showed up tonight for us. For Jason Hamill, more issues in the first inning. And again, really, it's just talking about how sharp he is. And unfortunately, you look at these pitches out over the plate. And again, 92, 93 miles an hour. Just hanging there. Well, and again, the velocity is not bad, but the action at home. See how straight the pitch is? Remember, Jason Hamill's a two-seam guy, a four-seam guy, four-seam up in the zone. And then we talk about a great slider. Part of the problem is that slider's been coming Coming and going and teams are challenging him early in the ball game to make pitches and he has not been able to do that there in the first inning. You take a look at his ERA through five innings this season. Look at that. First innings a 559 struggles there in the fourth. The other innings he's respectable well, or good. I, I mean again it's about a guy getting into a rhythm and again you know sometimes it's you know maybe changing up what goes on in the bullpen and again I'm not going to be one to step out and say this is what needs to happen but sometimes guys need to change up the routine to kind of change up and shake up what happens there in the first inning. Jason's going to have to figure that out because again some of that damage and setting the tone for the day is happening. Now as we watch his game start to really unfold he gets his breaking ball going gets some swings and misses and we see the Jason Hamill of old who has got the ability to shut down just about anybody's lineup. But again, the mistakes, they've got to go away because these are big mistakes in a ball game. And again, you know, he walks off the mound, this game was tied. Yeah, I mean, you look at the numbers, five innings, five hits, three earned, and he struggled in the first. 
he really wasn't terrible. Well, I mean, let me let me put it to you this way. You know, there's one guy in this lineup that you probably should fear more than any, Adam Lind. He's the one guy in the middle of this lineup. You know, he, he goes away with an elevated fastball for a ball and follows it up in the same spot just down a little bit, and that's actually the home run that he hits. So, you know, even the eyes from Lind are in the same spot. So it's the ability to kind of mix and match and make pitches to big hitters in the lineup. And unfortunately, he doubled up in a spot right there where Lind took full advantage of it. I mean, the memo was out. I saw him go away twice there, go back to that spot. It was a little bit better of a strike, but it was down in the zone, and Lynn gets lift off to left, and that's the home run that tied the ball game. All right, let's look at how the Cubs scored their runs tonight. In the second inning, Starlin Castro gets things rolling with a two-base hit. He's hit the ball very well as of late. There's a rocket that's going to get all the way to the Ivy. And that will bring Rizzo home. He comes rolling around all the way from first. There's the throw to the plate. And Rizzo yes, scores. Well, good to see. Starlin is swinging the bat very, very well right now. I've said it collectively with this Cubs group. I know that they're young, but if I were to define them as hitters, tremendous. One of the best in the National League. I watch a lot of baseball. I get to talk about a lot of baseball. They handle the fastball as well as anybody, and Willie Peralta is a fastball first guy. Loves to throw it. There's Jason Hamill gets a bunt down. I don't know what Starlin's doing here, but he gets caught off third. That's a mistake you can't make. No, certainly is not. Uh, even if it's a safety, he's got to commit to one direction or the other. He cannot go halfway. Kind of got hung out there in no man's land. But again, uh, the onslaught is on. Great hit right there by Fowler off second base. Even the breaks have been kind of going our way lately as well. Yep, and he says, challenge, Joe, challenge. He does. Safe, <laughs> and that means the Hamill run scores. Otherwise, he would not. He did not touch home plate for the play at second. We're in the bottom of the fifth now after a sack fly by Castro gave the Cubs a 5-4 lead. Miguel Montero, Mr. Hashtag, we are good. <laughs> Lines a single to right, and Anthony Rizzo motors around again to score. Then in the seventh inning, this is where the Cubs are going to break it open. Here's the play at the plate. There's Rizzo coming in to score again. Now our sports authority play the game from Jorge Soler. Pinch hitting. Two men on, nobody out. He gets one juicy to his liking and he smacks it in the bleach. Yeah, gets a change up elevated on an 0 2 pitch and is able to do damage on it. You see it right there. Spinning. First pinch hit by a Cub all pinch hit homer by a Cub all season long. And three run homers are the best. Good swing right there. Great to see Solaire get extension right there on that pitch. It's a mistake, so it's out over the plate and he's able to lift it, get it to the outcomes. Exactly what you wanted to see with that situation right there. Something to drive and he gets the he gets the uh, RB eyes to go along with it. All right, cameraman celebrating there as well. Let's grab a quick break and then Joe Madden is expected in the interview room. If you want to hear from the Cup manager, he's next. This is Cup Post Game Live. Presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield against Starlin Castro also want to tear this home stand. We'll look at the lineups after we hear from the manager. Cubs Post Game Live is presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. get a handful of minutes to start a new life. We gotta go! Keep looking! He's gotta be here! He's coming! So you grab what you need to get you through. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna go have our baby now. Play keys! Oh, I'm so nervous. When you get away from smartphones and video games and tablets, it's amazing what you can really plug into. This season, shop the brands you love, plus thousands of items on sale now. Sports Authority, all things sporting good. It's intelligent enough to warn of danger from virtually anywhere. It's been smashed, dropped, and driven. It's perceptive enough to detect other vehicles on the road. It's been shaken, rattled, and pummeled. It's innovative enough to brake by itself, park itself, and help you steer. It's been in the rain, the cold, and dragged through the mud. Introducing the all-new Mercedes-Benz GLE. It's where brains meet brawn.
Introducing 72 Hour Rewind from DirecTV. When you connect your DirecTV DVR to the internet, you can instantly go back in time and watch shows that aired up to three days ago. Catch up on shows you might have missed, even if you didn't record them. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. Every day is a sport. Getting that raise, asking her out, being yourself. That's a sport. And at Sport Clips, our MVP experience is going to help you win it. Maybe a massaging shampoo, a hot steam towel, and an awesome cut doesn't sound like much, but it might be all the edge you need. Sport Clips, it's good to be a guy. Comcast Sportsnet, your home for Chicago Cubs baseball. Magic number is down to four, I believe. Come on. Does that go to four now? We'll change that thing to four, boys. We don't have a four. <laughs> we don't Goes have a four from in the five building. to four. Can we get a four there in the building? Go. We'll find a way. Find a way. <laughs> Just go up and draw on the TV screen. <laughs> Maybe. Four. Welcome back to Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Let's check out the Cubs winning box score tonight as we wait for the manager to get done celebrating with his guys in the clubhouse, as they do after every I'm win. Waiting for a four. There's a big night for Chris Bryant. Three for five, scored a couple runs. Anthony Rizzo, huge night. Three for three, a double, scored three times, walked twice, on base five times. <laughs> Starlin, two doubles, a two for two night. Miggy Montero, a one for three, an RBI, and a strikeout, and uh, one for five at the top for Dexter Fowler. Well, if I told you that Anthony Rizzo and Starlin Cash, and you see Starlin there hitting in the five spot tonight, it's a great combination because they were 24 for 53. <laughs> it's almost 500 with seven homers against Mr. Peralta. That's just staggering numbers. That's why you saw Starlin climb and Anthony in the spot. And, oh, by the way, they went out and threw perfectos out there, five for five combined. So great effort, obviously, by those guys. Chris Bryant getting it done. I mean, this to me was a classic matchup of, you know, Willie Peralta. A lot of fastballs out of his hand. 94, 95. You saw it tonight. But I mean, the Cubs are a great hitting team. I, I, I should say, fastball hitting team, top to bottom in the lineup. And you know, you just really believe that the offense was going to roll again tonight. There was really no reason to believe that they wouldn't, especially considering the Peralta's got a 5-4 ERA over his last six starts. So they got it done. All right. There you go. Thank you. There's the four. Yay. Now magic number <laughs> is at four. Thank you to Danny Vega, Lou Melgarejo, and our great crew in there. Boy, Lou. All right, our UPS store taking care of business. Player of the game, Starlin Castro, who's been on fire this homestand. Two for two tonight with two RBIs. There was the double that got the Cubs rolling, got him on the board. Anthony Rizzo, pick him up and lay him down, big fella. And he beats the throw to the plate, safe, and that got the Cubs going. Yeah, Starlin's just Look at Starlin's numbers on the home. Talk about that first. Go ahead. <laughs> Eight for ten. Eight for ten. Well, it's like your high school batting edge. <laughs> well, I wish. They, well, I don't even think it was that good. But I'll tell you what, Starlin is locked in. And again, you know, maybe this is part of the internal competition that I love to talk about. Maybe it's the fact that he lost a little playing time and he's playing for his time on the field. But the bottom line is this, Starlin's getting pitches to hit, and if you remember the good Starlin, when Starlin was raking, this is what Starlin does. He's got the ability to do so many good things offensively. He's got great plate coverage. When he's got balance, and if you watch him closely right now, it's just a little more calm at the plate. Hands aren't moving so fast, feet aren't working so quick. He's waiting for his pitch, and he's executing right now. You see the first mistake out over the plate, and he typically jumps on it right now. All right, now time to hear from Joe Madden, the Cubs manager, in our Xfinity postgame press conference. Well, I mean, the thing that's really interesting, he's come off the bench. He had a good at-bat yesterday against uh, Rosenthal and really shadows 100 miles an hour and turns around a 100-mile-an-hour fastball foul. So I like that. And then today, uh, that was my biggest thought or concern. How, how would he react coming off the bench? So today he reacted pretty well. With the two-strike count, the ball goes into center field uh, bleachers. And then yesterday, um, to pull that ball was not easy to do and hit it that hard. So again, I'm, we're seeing that moving down the road again, just trying to figure out to give all these guys opportunity and playing time. Uh, but it's a nice weapon to have right there coming off a bench also. It's just, um, he looked good. Obviously, he's really, the bat speed is remarkably good. And uh, he looks comfortable to play. 
Do you think the competition between all the guys is elevating people's bikes like one the other? Never hurts. Um, that kind of uh, friendly competition is always a good thing. Um, everybody is pulling for each other. That's that's the the most important thing. Um, they know that it's bigger than any individual out there uh, regarding what we're attempting to do right now. So, uh, yeah, it's it's you know you see bias come off the bench hit a double. <clears throat> um, Solaire's home run. Uh, KB looks really good right now, and so does Riz, obviously. Schwarber, I know he's had uh, struggle getting hits, but he had hit the ball hard uh, several times tonight. Uh, really good at bats. He looks great to me, actually. I don't, I'm not worried about him at all. His swing looks outstanding. Uh, bullpen uh, is a big contributor. Um, you know, Hammer, I think, gets the win, doesn't he? Um, and I'm sure he's the first to tell you he wasn't as sharp as he can be. Uh, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of Cahill and Richard out of the bullpen. Those. Those acquisitions have been huge in that middle part of the game. That's the part of the game you win and lose a lot of times. And then and Travis has really been strong lately, really strong. And to pitch like he did at the end, and uh, we did not have to get uh, Ronnie up at all. That was outstanding. So just a, a really, uh, typically, it's a really good team win for us. All right, still to come, we'll look at Holly's key to the game. And your chance of one of the Cubs' top plays of the year. The nominees are next. Nissan Altima. With up to 270 horsepower, blind spot warning, and premium interior. For a limited time, choose Altima with 0% APR financing for up to 72 months. Plus, save up to $22.75. Altima, the ride you can always rely on. Shop your local Nissan store and choose Nissan.com. Innovation that excites. There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. Hey, Ralph Punzel. Oh, hey, Ronnie. Where are you headed? Great Clips. You're getting a haircut? I checked in already. He's in their online check-in. Online check-in? It saves you time. You're getting a haircut. Why? Thinking about to apply to astronaut school. That's cool. OK, I'll uh, see you, Ronnie. Next time, save time. Download the online check-in app today. Great clips. It's going to be great. This bale of hay cannot be controlled. When a wildfire raged through Elkhorn Ranch, the sudden loss of pasture became a serious problem for a family business. Faced with horses that needed feeding and a Texas drought that sent hay prices soaring, the owners had to act fast. Thankfully, Mary Miller banks with Chase for Business. And with greater financial clarity and a relationship built for the unexpected, she could control her cash flow and keep the ranch running. Chase for Business, so you can own it. This September, for the first time ever, and only at NTV, every set of Michelin tires is on sale. And get a $70 reward card after rebate when you purchase any four Michelin tires. September is the month to save on Michelin tires. Every set of Michelin tires is on sale. And get a $70 reward card. This month only at National Tire and Battery. That's all you need. Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Cholula Hot Sauce, the flavorful hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap. Welcome back. Social media night at the ballpark. And tonight we're asking, what is the best 2015 Cubs moment so far? Tell us on Twitter using one of the hashtags on your screen. Here are the nominees. Anthony Rizzo's amazing yeah. balancing <laughs> act as he climbs the tarp, the makes tarp, catch the while falling into the stands. The wow, how about that one? <laughs> that, wow. I, mean, that is, I'm, I was left speechless. Number two, stunned. Chris Bryant, a monster home run against the Diamondbacks to hit the left field video board. 495 foot tape measure shot, longest home run in baseball this year. Or was the top play Jake Carey at his no hitter at Dodger Stadium on Sunday night? 
Tell us which one is the top play on Twitter. Results after our Cubs coverage on Sportsnet Central. All right, let's look at the Blue Cross Blue Shield keys to the game. Holly. All right, here we go. Real simple tonight. I think we all kind of knew what it was. A lot of different ways of talking about it. I'd said back to business, and this is just it. You know, what this game represents. I mean, here's some of the obvious facts that we knew coming into this ball game. The Cubs, this is five-game winning streak snapped yesterday. You got the Brewers coming to town. The Brewers, they had an eight-game losing streak snapped yesterday. But it's also a reflection of what the Brewers are going through. At the same time, the Cubs had beaten... The Brewers, seven straight times coming in. Really what I'm saying is, let's take care of business, guys. We're the better team. We're playing better. We're pitching better. We've got something to play for. It was an attention to details. Now, at the beginning of the ball game, it wasn't as clean as we would like to see. We had three errors certainly factored into it, although the damage was minimal. Just kind of waiting for the offense to roll around, and they did in this ball game. So great to see the boys got rolling, got their mojo back, and got things moving in the right direction. So nice win tonight. Good feel, good win. And you got business to take care of the rest of the series. All right, coming up on Cubs Post Game Live, brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. We'll preview game two against the Milwaukee Brewers. That's tomorrow night at Wrigley. We'll be right back. Sports Authority is proud to be the official sporting goods retailer of the Chicago Cubs. Sports Authority, all things sporting good. When you get away from smartphones and video games and tablets, it's amazing what you can really plug into. This season, shop the brands you love, plus thousands of items on sale now. Sports Authority, all things sporting good. There are measures we can offer. Other agents in the field. I work alone. Okay, what's it gonna take? I want a guarantee. He wants the card. I'm in. good draw my phone a strong business needs to be connected the right location will provide everything a company needs to grow elk grove village is home to a community of over 3600 companies it's surrounded by highways it's freight rail served and its next door neighbor is the world's busiest airport so when it comes to being connected we have options. Elk Grove Village. Makers wanted. Technology. It has the power to completely blow our minds. And when AT&T and DirecTV get together, your mind will stay completely intact because their internet isn't getting any faster. This changes nothing. Welcome to the moment no one's been waiting for. The fastest internet and the best TV experience is already here with X1, only from Xfinity. Say big during Menards Made in the USA sale. Made in Ringgold, Georgia, Nature's Element Laminate Flooring has an embossed wood grain texture, 99 cents a square foot. Classic Charm has an authentic tile look and feel, 189 a square foot. Made in Rapid City, South Dakota, pre-finished bullnose shelving is great for storage areas, laundry rooms, pantries, and more. They're available in white or wheat oak. A four-foot shelf board starts at just $4.97. Save big money at Menards. All right, time for our Four Seasons Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing. Who's hot and who's not versus Jake Arrieta this season. Who's hot? How about Peter Borjo? 750 batting average, three for four, two extra base hits, two RBIs. Who's not? How about Gregory Polanco? Brutal. Buck 54, four Ks, and a 154 on base percentage. That's all. Brutal. All right, let's check out the pitching matchup for tomorrow's game two. As we said, Jake Arrieta going to the bump. Mark Shinowski just put it best. I yeah, said, well, what about this pitching matchup? He goes, all you need to know is that Jake Arrieta started. Well, maybe we should say it this way. Does Jake get his 20th tomorrow? Uh, the numbers tell us he should. Uh, I mean, again, go out there and execute, boys. That's really what it comes down to. Play your game. You played great in the second half. Everything seems to be lined up well for you. 
Jake going. He's locked in. I mean, eight innings, six hits, and earned runs last time out, 117 pitches. I mean, that's against another playoff caliber team. Right now, the Brewers are not that. So you'd like to believe that going into tomorrow is going to be a lot of the same. So there's a real good possibility that he picks up his 20th. And again, take it to the Brew Crew. It's all about the bats kind of coming alive and backing them up. Love to see that offense early. All right, we will see how things shake out tomorrow as Arietta goes to the bump. Cubs win this one tonight. Their magic number down to just four. Giants had the evening off. They'll go back to work tomorrow in San Diego. So we'll see if the Cubbies can pick up a couple more off that magic number. The earliest they could possibly clinch this thing would be on Wednesday evening. And Holly and I will be back with you. You'll be with Kelly tomorrow. I am off. I will see you on Wednesday. Let's make it happen. All right, Cubs win their ace straight over the Brew Crew. Pat and Mark are next. Driven out into deep center. Schaefer back. It is gone. Three run homer off the bench. Solaire with a little padding in this one. Cubs win their eighth straight over the beer makers. Thanks for hanging with us. Welcome to Sportsnet Central presented by GMC. Mark Shinovsky, Pat Boyle with you tonight. We will have the latest on Jay Cutler's hamstring injury and Luke Stuckmeyer, old Luke Puckmeyer, reporting from Blackhawk scrimmage at the United Center. It's all straight ahead on Sportsnet Central. Sportsnet Central, presented by GMC. We begin the show with our coverage of the Cubs' hunt for October, presented by Feldco. Cubs continuing their homestand, a three-game series against the Brewers at Wrigley Field. And look who's in the stands. Former ace Kerry Wood enjoying the game. Jason Hamill hoping to return to form with the playoffs looming. But Hamill got off to another rough start. First and third with one away in the first. He throws the pickoff attempt away. That brings home a run so the Brewers quickly on top one nothing. One batter later Hamill a chance to escape without further damage but no. Domingo Santana base it up the middle. Cubs are down two nothing. Hamill's first inning earn run average is over five. But the Cubs would rally in their half of the second. Shot up toward the alley, and he'll roll to the wall. Rizzo on his way to third. Gary Jones is going to send him. Might be a play, and he is safe. No, yes, he is. Rizzo found a way in. Another close play at the plate, but Rizzo was in there. Cubs on the board. Five batters later, bases loaded for Dexter Fowler. Rips one up the middle off the second base bag and into right center. One run scores. Fowler trying to stretch it into a double. There's going to be a play. Fowler initially called out. The out recorded before Hamill could touch the plate. But upon review, Fowler clearly beat the tag. He's safe. That means the Hamill run counts. Cubs now in front 3-2. It was 4-2 mark, top of the fifth. Runner on first for Adam Lynn. And the lefty taking Hamill. Oppo. That ties it up at four. Hamill's done after allowing three earned in five innings of work. Bottom five. Comes back in front after a sack fly. Miguel Montero adds to that. Looping RBI single in the right. It's now 6-4 Northsiders. Top of the seventh. Brewers have a man on. Clayton Richard. The wild pitch. Ball carries off the Bricks, Scooter Jeanette trying for third. Chris Bryant picks it up and dives to the bag. Jeanette is called out. The ruling stands after the Brewers' challenge was not conclusive video evidence. Great effort there by Bryant. 6-4, bottom of the seventh, Jorge Soler time. Driven out into deep center. Schaefer back. It is gone. Three-run homer off the bench. The dagger, as they like to say, <laughs> north of the border. Solaire's second long ball since returning from the DL. Cubs win the series opener against Milwaukee. 9 5 is your final. And with that win, the Cubs' magic number goes to four. I've been that excited it's to see the Stanley, Cup, building. the Stanley Cup countdown that we do. I love that. Here's Jason Hamill after his ninth win on the year. You know what? All I can do is stay positive. Uh, a lot of good things happened tonight. Uh, made some pitches when I needed. Found the slider. Um, you know, sometimes the 
the box score doesn't quite tell the story on uh, exactly what happened. Uh, and the guys, it doesn't matter how many times I've given up runs in the first inning, they've battled back and they continue to do that. So, you know, Steve never quits. And, you know, it's fun to sit back and watch. I just uh, continue to put hard work in. I guarantee I'm working hard to figure it out. And some good things happen tonight. So, you know, I'm just going to stay positive and, and keep grinding. Joe called the rotation for the playoffs after the first two guys flew it. Mm -hmm. uh, how confident are you that you're that three guy going in? Obviously, I'm confident in myself. I'm, I'm never going to be questioning. Obviously, I'd like to see some better results right now. Um, but I know what I can do. And, um, you know, it's, it's disappointing that it doesn't look that great right now. But sometimes you just got to compete with, with what you got. And that's it. Um, trying to fix it in the middle of a pennant race obviously isn't, isn't the easiest thing to do. But uh, like I said, I can hear TM out there working hard trying to figure it out. And small things are falling into place. So if I'm the third guy, it is what it is. Um, you know, it's past the ego, ego thing. You check your ego at the door once, once October hits. You got to put your best guy out there, and you know I want to be that guy. I know the walk wasn't timely, but it was only one walk. I mean, making mm -hmm. them earn it in the first is that mm -hmm. a little step for you? You know, I got to exercise some demons or something for that first inning because I warmed up in the pen, great. You know, I've put together some pretty good pitches. I felt great, and you know, for whatever reason, you know, I find myself battling back in counts. Not, you know, my pitch selection could be better early. Um, pitching the way that I can be what type of pitcher I know I am. So, um, you know, I'm just going to continue to work hard on that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's been a little while, you know, since that first inning's put on smoothly for me. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to continue to beat myself up. The guys continue to pick me up, so i got to stay positive. Hamill confident he could be that number three starter in the postseason. You may have heard during the broadcast, it's Cubs social media night, and we're asking you, what's the best 2015 Cubs moment so far? Tell us on Twitter using one of the hashtags you see on the screen, Rizzo Catch, Brian HR, Arietta No No, and we will tabulate your votes and have the winner for you a little bit later on in Sportsnet Central. And now this Sportsnet Central injury alert affecting the Cubs' big division rival. Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina suffered a partially torn left thumb ligament on this play at the plate in yesterday's game at Wrigley Field. Molina will be reevaluated in a week, but general manager John Mozalak is hopeful the seven-time All-Star will be ready for postseason play. Checking some other Major League action. The Reds and Cardinals in St. Louis tonight. Bottom of the eighth inning. Cincinnati up 1-0. But you knew the Cardinals would come back. Johnny Peralta, the base hit. Tommy Pham scores. That will tie the game. Later in the inning, Stephen Piscotty, this rookie, has really been big since coming up from the minors, crushes one to left center. Peter Borges comes all the way around from first to score. And the Cardinals will go on to win it by a final of 2-1. So here's an up to the second look at the NL Central standings and the wild card. Cubs remain six back of the Cardinals after both win. The Cubs are currently a game and a half back of the Pirates with uh, 12 games to go. But Pittsburgh is leading Colorado right now 9-3 in the ninth inning. Pirates will push that back to two. They hold on to that victory. Still to come on Sportsnet Central, Jeff Samarja explains how he was giving away wins earlier in the season and why he was able to correct that in dominant fashion today. If there's definitely not a sense of panic or a sense of woe is us and uh, you know, the sky is falling, it's quit doing dumb stuff. Remain calm, all is well. Jared Allen and company will likely, though, be playing without Jay Cutler for the near future. We've got the details. And the Blackhawks take the ice at the United Center with plenty of fanfare inside and outside the building. We'll show you some of the festivities when Sportsnet Central literally rolls on. Sportsnet Central on Comcast Sportsnet is presented to you by GMC. We are professional grade. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, in everything we build, that's exactly what we deliver. 
This is Precision. This is GMC. Now pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select 2015 Sierra Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Kids are expensive, so I'm always looking to get more for my money. That's why I switched from Uverse to Xfinity. They have the most free on-demand TV shows and movies on all my devices. It's perfect for me because my kids are costing me a fortune. Don't settle for Uverse. Xfinity is perfect for people who want more entertainment for their money. Sign up today or get started with this great offer. Call or go online today. Hey, Chopper Bob reporting. Heavy showroom traffic due to great savings. I need to get a little higher so I can see them all. Right now at Oak Brook Toyota in Westmont, lease a brand new 2015 Toyota Camry SE for only $189 a month. Be sure to see us before you buy. Bob Rorman. Bob Rorman's Oak Brook Toyota in Westmont. Only five minutes west of the Tri-State on Ogden Avenue. This is Pete. Pete is helping his aunt move, so he's not thinking about winter tires right now. But if he were, all he'd need to know is TireRack.com. Right now, he can get a $50 prepaid MasterCard when he buys a set of four select winter tires. For details, he'd go to TireRack.com slash offer. But Pete's not thinking about tires. Pete's thinking it would have been nice if his aunt had mentioned the minor bird. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Who says desirable can't also be responsible? With 46 standard safety features, a Lexus RX is proof that fun can be good for you. Lease the 2015 RX 350 for $399 a month for 36 months. See your Lexus dealer. We're back with a very busy day for the White Sox. It all started with Jose Abreu being named the American League's co-player of the week along with Texas slugger Prince Fielder. Abreu hit 458 with two homers, nine runs batted in over six games last week. Now to the action on the field. Jeff Samarja on the hill for game one of the team's split doubleheader in Detroit. And to say the Shark was on his game would be a huge understatement. The free agent to be needed just 88 pitches to tame the Tigers in the opener. He tossed a complete game shutout, allowing just one hitter to reach on a soft single by Victor Martinez. Sharks line nine innings, one hit, no walks, six strikeouts. Samarja picks up his 10th victory, the first time he's hit double-digit wins in his big league career. Hard to believe considering he's a former All-Star. An Adam Eaton RBI single and a Carlos Sanchez homer would provide the offense. Sox walk away with a tidy 2-0 victory in 2 hours and 12 minutes. I think um, we made some right adjustments and, and uh, you know, me and BJ got together on the film uh, in between starts and I think we found something that, you know, was essentially tipping my pitches, you know, half the way. And, um, you know, when you find that and it gives you a little extra confidence that, hey, you know, we can go out and make our pitches and, and have a good day. So I need to go back to my last couple starts and, you know, see why good pitches were getting tattooed. So um, <laughs> it's not a fun feeling. So you definitely want to fix it as fast as possible. Eric Johnson took them out in game two for the south side. Just got some early run support. Second inning, Sox already up a run. Gordon Beckham taking Randy Wolf to the people and right. Solo shot puts the good guys on top 2-0. Second inning, Abreu adds to that. Sends one into center. Tyler Saladino scores easily. Abreu's 96th RBI. It's 3-0 on that double. Fourth inning, south 3-2 Sox. Johnson's in trouble. Base is juice, but he gets Josh Wilson on the high heat to end the threat. Sox hang on to win 3-2, sweeping the doubleheader in Detroit and earning the franchise's 9,000th win. I, he threw great. Um, you know, I, I think even when they got some guys on, he was he was able to show some command, and uh, you know, we got him some early runs, and, and he was able to make it hold up. I felt good. Um, it was a good uh, first inning to start, you know, take the right foot forward, and then, uh, you know, I thought I I was very aggressive in the zone with uh, fastball slider change, and then, you know, um, gave up a few 
few hits. Just I think sometimes, you know, the aggressiveness, and you know, you're going to run into some some uh, some hits here and there. Bears head coach John Fox continues to be extremely tight-lipped about injury news. This afternoon, Fox said Jay Cutler suffered a strained hamstring in yesterday's loss to Arizona, but Fox wouldn't discuss what medical tests Cutler went through or speculate on his status for Sunday's game in Seattle. A couple of hours later, the normally reliable Adam Schefter reported Cutler would be out at least two weeks with Jimmy Clausen taking over the starting role for the circumstances and uh, his uh, preparation reps uh, and getting ready to play Arizona. Um, most backups are not getting all those reps, regardless of the position. I think at the quarterback position, it's a little tougher uh, because you have to be in tune to everybody else completely. Um, but I think all in all, he, he did okay. We got to work with what you got, and you got to go get out there and go play right now. And uh, it, the guys that are out there got to go make plays and, and try to win that game the best that they can. Of course, the Bears' issues go way beyond the quarterback position. They're one of only two NFL teams without a sack in the first two games. That's allowed veteran quarterbacks Aaron Rodgers and Carson Palmer to pick apart an overmatched secondary. But according to converted linebacker Jared Allen, there's no need to panic. Bears defense will be just fine. So I, I just think, I mean, it's all correctable. I guess that they, there's no, there's, there's definitely not a sense of panic or a sense of woe is us and uh, you know, the sky is falling. It's quit doing dumb stuff and, and, and get it get it corrected. It's, it's, it's all teachable, it's all done, and then, and, then, and then it's just, you know, finding ways to make more plays. That, that kind of stuff is just, you know, for each guy to, to put that on, to own it and, and do what you can do to get better and, and, and not, you know, get caught up in, in what it was. I mean, you look at that game, and again, it, it, it's, I know the score looked bad, but when you watch the film, you know, it, it's a handful of plays that, that create that. Boy, I think I've heard that somewhere before. You knew we'd pull this stat out. Since 1990, teams that started 0-2, well, they only make it to the postseason 12% of the time. Not a good omen for the Bears going forward. How about some Monday Night Football? Brandon Marshall and the New York Jets trying to drop the Colts to 0-2. Pick it up in the first quarter as Brandon watches on. Jets driving Ryan Fitzpatrick. Not going to Marshall, going to Eric Decker. Instead, 7-0 in favor of the visitors. Third quarter, 10-0 Jets. Colts inches away from the goal line. Frank Gore oh. simply drops the ball untouched. Oh, One of five turnovers in the game for the home team. The Colts really looked awful in this one. Fourth quarter, New York up a field goal. Fitzpatrick to number 15, Brandon Marshall. Bulls his way into the end zone. The stats on the night, seven catches, 101 yards as the Jets win. Final score of 20 to 7. It's been 99 days since the Blackhawks shut out the Tampa Bay Lightning to zip in game six to hoist their sixth Stanley Cup in franchise history. While a ton has happened with the team over the last three months, most of the Blackhawks faithful have weathered this tumultuous summer and tonight they packed the United Center for the training camp festival. A contest, the Hawks hosted a fan fest outside of the United Center, including air hockey, bouncy slides, and uh, the always the crowd pleaser, the stuck mire in a plastic bubble. <laughs> More on that later. Let's go to overtime. Hawks playing the full five minutes in the three-on-three -three format. Marco Dano sets up Tavo Teravine in there. The Red Squad up a goal. 20 seconds later, White T would answer. Artem Anisimov coast pass Michael Layton for the equalizer, and we are all squared three again. Not even 60 seconds later, Jake Dowell leaves it for David Runblad. That's the third tally in just over a minute. It's the game winner. The three-on-three -three overtime format's going to be fun. This was all said and done. The Hawks, yeah, they were winners tonight. White team wins <laughs> in OT, 4-3 to final. I think there's spots. Yeah, there's a number of spots, and uh, there's a number of guys entertaining or entertaining us as far as who's going to grab them. So it's uh, you can say spots or uh, up front, back end. So it's, there's definitely opportunity. With an off-season of salary cap adjusting, the Blackhawks roster opens with opportunity for old and young alike. I don't feel like uh, this is a time for, for me uh, to retire, but uh, 
if I don't have a contract, I have no, ch no other chance. Uh, I'm not planning to go to Europe, and uh, uh, NHL is a, is a league where I want to play next year. Like after you won the Cup in 2010, there was a bit of a turnover, and some new guys stepped in and were able to become a part of that team. And I think this year is kind of a similar situation where there's that turnover is happening again, and there's going to be opportunity for other guys. And so I'm trying, I'm hoping to make the most of that. And I think other college guys or free agents kind of see that opportunity as well and are trying to take advantage. I think we have different type of players coming in this year. We've got uh, three Russians coming in. Uh, we have the guys that are coming in through our system. We signed some free agents. Uh, in the summer, or we could say Bonner's one of those guys, uh, you know, a couple of guys in trades. So it's a, uh, there's, you can say there's six, seven guys right now that are uh, up front that are uh, at different stages, whether they're older players, younger players, new to our organization. It's an experience that Tavo Teravainen went through a year ago, and patience paid off. That's a good lesson for anybody in the same spot this season. It's a battle, of course, and you have to uh, keep fighting and keep playing your play, playing your game. Uh, sometimes you have to be patient, like I did last year. I had to go Rockford, uh, like play play there, fun my game, and uh, uh, take some time sometimes. And some of these Hawks hopefuls will find out their fate at the end of the week. Joel Quenville saying the Blackhawks will make cuts come Friday or Saturday. Meanwhile, the more familiar faces of the defending Stanley Cup champs, they'll be on the ice Tuesday night as the preseason opens right here against the Red Wings. Covering the Blackhawks at the United Center, Luke Stuckmeyer, Comcast Sportsnet. Luke, thanks. We'll have the Hawks and Red Wings for you Wednesday on CSN+. Plus. We're just 16 days away from the Blackhawks Stanley Cup Championship banner-raising ceremony at the season opener against the Rangers October 7th. We'll have live pregame and postgame festivities from the United Center right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And the game will be on our sister station, NBCSN. Might be a big baseball game that day. Yeah, well. I, rumor has that. Yep. Wild card game. They won tonight, beating the Brewers 9 5. We'll hear from Anthony Rizzo inside the victorious home clubhouse when we return. With up to 270 horsepower, blind spot warning, and premium interior. For a limited time, choose Altima with 0% APR financing for up to 72 months. Plus, save up to $22.75. Altima, the ride you can always rely on. Shop your local Nissan store and choose Nissan.com. Innovation that excites. McRib season is back. Feast on the legendary taste of real pork with sweet and tangy barbecue sauce. Now only $5 for a McRib with medium fries and medium Dr. Pepper. I just had a horrible nightmare. My company's entire network went down and I was home in bed unaware. But that would never happen. Comcast Business monitors my company's network 24 hours a day and calls and emails me of something like... This scary storm takes it offline, so I can rest easy. What, you don't have a desk bed? Don't be left in the dark. Get proactive alerts 24-7. Comcast Business, built for business. My dad thinks the best color for a car is red. My cousin says he prefers European cars. And my friend, well, he thinks everyone should drive what he drives. My car is my car. And it's my choice, Mitsubishi. Go to MaxManson.com. There's 0% APR financing for 60 to 72 months plus APR cash. And a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Since 1982, more than 50,000 buyers have called Max Manson their Mitsubishi dealer. This week, the White Sox road trip continues, and CSN has more games than anywhere else. Starting Monday afternoon, Abreu leads the charge into a Central Division clash with Cabrera and the Tigers, followed by Tuesday night's Game 3 tilt at 6, and Wednesday's series finale at 11.30 a.m. Then, the scene shifts to New York as the Silver and Black look to lower the boom on A-Rod and the Bronx Bombers, starting Thursday and Friday night at 6, and Saturday afternoon at 2.30. Six games, one network. White Sox week, starting Monday at 11.30 on CSN. 
Goes up the stop sign. Back to the Cubs for tonight's GMC professional grade player Anthony Rizzo went three for three with a double and three runs scored. He reached base in all five plate appearances. Cubs beat the Brew Crew nine to five. Let's hear from the All-Star first baseman. I mean, the game of us are focused on that. We're just focused on playing. Today we had a good game and we'll be ready to go tomorrow and redo it all over again. You like doing all the, the, the running around the bases, showing the speed? Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, I was getting on base. You know, I line up so deep that uh, just any run and anything I can, can drive in the run. So uh, <clears throat> as long as we get on, keep getting on base, uh, good things will happen. I know you guys are taking it one day at a time, not looking ahead, but you're starting to get a feeling for what this team is capable of if things go right? Uh, yeah, I mean, if things go right, obviously, but it's not how it, it goes, so there's going to be, uh, we're, we're battle-tested right now, but uh, you know, we just got to keep going. Especially with the way you guys hit here, do you think you made it pretty tough on other teams to come in here now and win? I think the atmosphere here has shifted a lot the second half. Uh, with the fans being engaged, uh, how engaged they are in all the games, um, that we feed off of that, especially right now. So um, it's, we can really tell the difference, and uh, it's it's fun to play every day here at Wrigley Field. You were talking about the team being so deep, and it's almost like Joe can push a button. So he pushes a button and gets over. So they're in there. They go get free run. Right? Isn't that funny how that works? <laughs> If it only worked every time like that. Um, but Joe uh, Joe has his mixes up there and who he thinks is the best matchup, and they, a lot of work goes into what he does, and uh, we just sit back and uh, whatever moves he makes, he makes. What is it about this team that, you know, even if you fall down, you know, in the first inning by a couple of runs, what is it about this team that you don't really get phased by that? I think it's just because it's, it's been all year. I'm not saying we've been down early, but we know – if we don't score, I mean, we're really good at scoring early, but we know if we don't score early, we're going to score late. So it's just that sense of confidence that we have that it's just kind of, I don't know, I can't really explain it. You just had a series with St. Louis. You got one coming with Pittsburgh. Is, is it hard at all to stay up for a team that's basically out of it? No, absolutely not. They're, uh, those guys, I've, we've been on that side plenty of times, and uh, they're playing as hard as they can. We're playing as hard as we can, and uh, it's, you can't overlook any team at this point. you got a base five times today. Uh, how locked did you feel in these days? Uh, I don't know. Just seeing the ball hit, it really uh, just let it ride. See the ball, hit the ball makes it sound pretty simple. I'm not sure if he's worn out from the game or from the post-game dance party, which has become kind of a theme of this joy ride this season. You know, I, I like the fact that, you know, you have this series starting against Milwaukee, a team that mm -hmm. you think you're just going to show up and win, coming off that emotional series against the Cards. This is probably a little tougher ball game than, <laughs> than anybody expected tonight. We've got all kinds of interesting side stories along with the Cubs' victory ride. Back on April 18th, Cubs catcher Miguel Montero brought out the hashtag we are good after a Starlin Castro walk-off single put the Cubs over 500 through 10 games for the first time since 2009. It's a modest accomplishment there. Yeah, the hashtag, it took off just like the team did, and it's turned out to be one of the catchphrases of the year in that Cubs clubhouse. Montero and his teammates have more on the we are good hashtag. I don't even know how I came up with it, to be honest. I, I I don't really tweet that much. And then when I came here, you know, I see the fans just kind of interacting with them, and it got me, got me addicted to it. So I, uh, I don't know, for, for a reason, I think we lost a couple of games, and I just want to kind of give, a, you know, my, my express my emotions and say, you know, it's okay, we, we're going to lose some games. And I came up with it, we're good, you know, and uh, I mean, I got, it got people like it, I guess. It's fun to watch it, and it's fun to people actually he tweet it back and, and, and believe it as well so uh, it made me feel proud of myself I did something good we are good and Miggy nailed it early on he be we believed in ourselves but it was nice that he put it out there and and the city you know got behind it and everybody everybody's loving that we are good or, or we are awesome or whatever <laughs> you know he's changed it like three times but uh, yeah it's cool because we know we're good and, and we got a good group of guys that's the main thing it's kind of a part of us now it's part of the team it's part of uh, us players and 
Uh, you know, we want to show the fans some, some uh, you know, some support and some love when we do get on Twitter. And, uh, you know, it's just another kind of sign just to, you know, promote the fans and, you know, thank them for coming out. Uh, we say it all the time. We, I mean, I think we even read it on our, our, our lineup a couple times, so, but... Uh, Hopefully we can just keep with it. Um, I mean, I, hopefully it's here for a while, but um, we all have the shares. We rock it. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll credit Miggy with that one. People just making fun of my grammar and Twitter, which is fine, <laughs> which is fine. I say, well, you know what? I, I probably don't write it as good as I speak it. You just look at his tweets, you know, you'll just crack up because uh, because uh, he's the English bearer, bearer, you know, but uh, but uh, he does a great job on social media. He, you know, he makes a lot of people smile and uh, he sends out a lot of funny tweets. I have fun. I, I tweet back and uh, probably take a couple minutes to try to understand what I'm trying to say to those guys that are reading it. And uh, But, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, people have been pretty pretty nice it's kind of the, the phrase of the year I guess it's kind of just what we're you know trying to go uh, you know go for the motto do simple better we yeah. are good it's pretty simple yeah it's simple it's easy <laughs> it's it, 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 everyone knows what it means <laughs> whenever we say we are good it basically means you know we're confident you know we may be young but we're confident we're gonna try and get the job done and uh, do the best we can to come out with a W well, Pirates began the night two games up on the Cubs. Bucks were in Colorado tonight. Top of the first. Starling Marte taking John Gray deep to left. Solo shot gives the Pirates the early lead in the fourth. Bucks extend their lead. Jordy Mercer into the corner. Francisco Cervelli scores. Pittsburgh up 4 0, and they would roll to a 9 3 victory over the Rockies. So here's an up the second look at the NL Central and the wild card. Cards, Cubs, Pirates, all winners tonight. So Cubs remain six back of the Cards, and they are two games behind the Pirates for that top wild card spot. Castro, another big game for him. Two for two, two RBIs. He is batting 800 on this current homestand with nine runs batted in. Here's Starlin moments ago. I, do you attribute everything to some of these mechanical changes you've made? Your, what is it? Is it confidence? I know we've talked to you about it, but what yeah, you... I think I think the most the most the most thing is the confidence. Okay. I think that's that's as the hater, it's like it's like the best thing that we can get when when when, when we have the confidence, a lot of things going going good. So even more than the changes at the yeah, point, even more, even more, right? because like I said another day, sometimes the pitcher make you change. You know, sometimes the pitch, how they pitch you, they make you change. You know, but if, you, if you, the confidence is there, some, a lot of good things come. Hey, what's that? Like Joe was talking about that infield being kind of messed up since their last concert out there. Does it seem different to you in the home scene? Uh, I, don't th I don't think uh, the infield is okay. I think the, the grass and the outfield is bad. Like, I, but I don't think, I don't think in the infield is nothing, it's nothing bad there, but, I mean, we better be the infield good because Everything bad, we'd be in trouble. The grass is in the outfield just lumpy, uneven. Say it again. The grass in the outfield is just lumpy. Yeah, it's it's like it's not it's not even. Like it's somewhere long, somewhere short, and the it's not it's not like it used to look, you know. And the better be in the outfield than the infield. It was it's, a bad hop. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think that I think if I think if that ball. I used I used I used to attack. I just my first first two two step is just a start attack the ball. But I think I think that ball after 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 he hit the, the dirt, I think it's gonna be better have the the, 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 the one the one that happened. Yeah, and they can do that and they just try next time happen like that. Just try to block the ball right there and they keep it in front of me and they, it's close after they make it out. So how have you accepted the role that you're in now? Just not an everyday player. You've been playing a lot lately. How have you accepted it? Yeah, just just try to coming every day. To, yeah, you just try to, to be here every day, ready. No matter what, if you be in the bench, if you be playing, if you be using lay in, nothing about it. Just try to be here every day, ready, and the, and try to take all the opportunity they give it to me. 
I think you have to credit Starlin. Oh, no How question about this it. whole situation. He's over 400 this month after getting benched. A lot of players could have sulked and gone yeah. the other way, and you know he's turned things around. Pretty remarkable. Now he's going to be an important part of their postseason run. Time to select tonight's country financial top performers. You're looking at him. Daniel Murphy of the Mets had a big night. Jose Batista, Joey Ma Joey Bats, his 105th RBI of the season. Now how about Carlos Correa, the young shortstop of the Astros, one of the best young players in all of baseball. He has 19 home runs as being recalled from the minors. He'll turn 21 tomorrow. Not much room over there as Rizzo gets on the top. He makes a catch. Anthony Rizzo with one of the Cubs' plays of the year. Coming up, we'll find out if you voted it number one. That's next on Sportsnet Central. something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be downtimes. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. Ta-da! What? Yes! Yes! Arby's, we have the meat. Morgan State University plays Howard University in the 18th Annual Chicago Football Classic, Saturday, September 26th at Soldier Field. College Fair at 10, tailgating at noon, kickoff at 3.30 p.m. In partnership with NBC5 Chicago, making a difference. Visit chicagofootballclassic.biz. Remember the invite? Remember to make reservations? Absolutely. Remember the tickets? Remember where we parked? The generously appointed Lexus ES and ES Hybrid with leading edge connectivity. Unforgettable. Lease the 2015 ES 350 for 329 a month for 36 months. See your Lexus dealer. We will have both of Chicago's baseball teams for you tomorrow night here on Comcast Sportsnet. White Sox try to make it three in a row in Detroit with Jose Quintana on the mound. You can find that one on the main channel at 6 p.m. Tomorrow's Cubs-Brewers game is on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. It all begins with pregame live at 6.30. Then Jake Arrieta tries for his 20th win against the Brew Crew. Len and J.D. have the call at 7. Time for our Great Clips Download of the Week featuring the most popular video at CSNChicago.com for the past seven days. And this week's Great Clips Clip of the Week features the Trinity International Soccer Team killing time during a weather delay. To see more of this video, log on to CSNChicago.com and download the Great Clips app on your iPhone or Android to save you some time today. The Plays of the Day are presented by Lexus. Number three, at the Copa, Jeff Samarja's outing. He pitched a complete game, one-hit shutout of the Tigers. Shark fan, a half dozen batters in the process. Jeff picks up his 10th win. First time in his career he's reached that as the Sox sweep the Tigers in his win bill. Number two, back to Wrigley Field. Wild pitch from Clayton Richard bounces around the backstop. Scooter Jeanette tries to go from first to third, but Chris Bryant makes the, the diving tag. He really was safe. I'm not sure what they were looking at in replay, but it's an out that was key as the Cubs beat the Brew Crew 9-5. Number one, Yanks chase David Price. He'd look good in the Cubs uniform next year. Here's the